Hey guys, if you watched my video on how to rebuild or test the starter, the one where I show how it works with internal components, well, I took everything apart. And a lot of people tell me, how come you don't show how to reassemble everything? And I'm like, well, this is reassembly is the same as disassembly in reverse. But in this video, I actually listen to you and I show you how to reassemble it. Because <laughs> I like you guys. All right, this is how you do it. Uh, you have your armature here and your armature housing. It goes in like that. You just slide it over. And make sure the brushes are on top when you put this together like that. If the brushes are on the bottom, they're good. All right. Now, in here, what you want to do is... One second, let me get it and I'll tell you guys what I'm doing here. You want to align these two holes here on the cap, and you want to align them so you can see the light. Make sure you see the light come through here. Uh, let me see if I can show it to you guys. It's right in here, and it's probably not going to show up there. There you go. The one over here. You see the light coming through? I had light coming through. Ah! What happened? Oh, there it is. All right, one more time. There, right there. See, I'm turning it and it goes away, the light. Well, make sure you align them and you can see the light and there's no, no obstruction through them. So it's, you know, sometimes there's, a, there's something in the way and it, it's not a good idea. So, I mean, not a good idea to put it through and there's something in the way in here, like a winding, a field coil winding or something. So then you put the bolts through on the bottom, the two bolts that attach the cap to the housing right there. Next thing is the brush holder and you put that on top here like so. And here now what you got to do is you got to make sure, I actually got it in one shot if I even wanted to do that. There's two holes here, there's two, one hole here right there, where my finger is right there, and another hole on top. So you, you want to put the bolts through those holes, like so. Right. Now, if you remember my first video, these have little coils set up here. You see that little coil? Get closer here for a second for you guys. <sighs> you, see, you see that right there? You know what? You can see probably you can see this one better. You see that? That's a coil. It's wound up. It's like a wound up um, piece of metal. And then what what it does is there's a tab in, in here. This is the brush holder. This is the brush, and it holds the brush in with a tab because it's all wound up over here. So you gotta take the needles, pliers, pull the tab out of this brush holder, then slide the brush in, then put the tab back on. And it's four. Two positive, two negative. So let me show you how that's done. This is a little tricky, so I've never done this on camera before. Actually, I have my first video online, but it's a little tricky on camera. So, like I said, you grab the coil here, you... But make sure this housing does not slip up, because you want the brushes to hit, to touch the commutator. So, you grab this, twist, and the tab comes out. See that? That's the tab coming out of the housing. Then you push the brush in there, and you put it back in. And that's that one. See the tab right there? That's one brush. And do the same with the other three. And make sure nothing comes apart over here. Here. So that's two. Same thing here. Grab that coil piece, turn it out, then slide the brush in. It's good. Same thing here. Grab the coil piece, slide the tab out, and push the 
brush in and you're done. They're all in the brushes. Now, take your lever. I still have my lever in here. Let me take it out and show you guys how this is going to sit. This lever, remember, is controlled by the solenoid. Oh, one more thing also, make sure, I don't know if I mentioned it, but make sure these gears are good. Uh, make sure there's no scoring or chip teeth or anything like that and just grease them a little, a little bit. And also over here, make sure this bearing turns nice and freely, no binding or no, you know, it feels all smooth. And the same thing with the, there's a bearing on the bottom of this uh, housing. Make sure when you turn the whole commutator that that's good. Now, you see the solenoid? Remember, the solenoid controls this lever. Now, this is how it's going to sit in there. You see that little notch right there? Right there? This, you see that in the middle? That's a hole. Now, that hole goes through here, and this spring type thingy sits on here. Rather, this is how it goes. So, you're going to. Let me see if you can see this. It goes through the top here into the hole on the inside. Now you're through the hole there. You're through the hole. And now that notch I was talking about sits right on top of it. That's how, it, that's how it's going to sit in there. And remember, as this gets energized, it pulls down and this pushes up on the Bendix, and which pushes the gear up, the pinion gear, like that. So that's how it sits in there, in case you were wondering. And I don't know how many of you were wondering that. Now, in order to put that, the best way to do this is to put it through here, not through here first. This is where the solenoid goes. So you put it through here, there's a slot here, then it comes out through here, you can see that. And make sure the notch is facing downwards. And that's how it is in there. Now what you want to do here is, see that? Ah, see it right there. Now what you want to do is, what I just showed you, you want to do that in here, which could be a little tricky. So let me see if I can do that for you guys. Uh, let's see, this goes through here. Uh, this is a little tricky, and it's probably more tricky on camera. And there's one to cooperate. So let's see how this is going to pan out. You see that? I'm holding it down with my other finger so it's in a down position. I got the notch in there, so first I'm going to put it through that hole, then it's going to sit on that notch. So it's done. I am the man. I hope I'm the man. Let's see. Yes. Baby, who is the man? I'm the man. Now, in this case, I thread in your solenoid first, because that could be a little bit of a biatch. So let me see if I can find the bolts for that. These are the bolts. Uh, you can put some thread lock around these. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Actually, no, I wouldn't put thread lock around these. Sorry. Yeah, you can. Whatever. I don't want to live a little. Alright, you put that in there and that in there to secure the solenoid. And it's under a little tension, so you might have to press down on it. Same thing on this side. It's under a little tension here. And this, there's also a lot of grease in here, so you might want to grease this up also. Whenever you see gears, you would want to grease them up, like gears here gears on this thing, on the Bendix. So, same thing here. I'm just going to finger tighten for now, but this is under a little bit of pressure, tension, so you have to press down and use a socket and uh, do that. So now, you have to align these two bolts with these two bosses that are threaded in here. One, two. So this could, this could also get a little tricky. Let's see if I could do this. And let's see how many tries it takes me. 
Remember, this is live, baby. I get no retakes, no editing, no nothing. I'm all raw. Also, uh, make sure you, when you do this, you keep the solenoid close to this wire here. Okay, because that connects to the solenoid. So, when you line everything up, make sure it's lined up in according to that relationship right there. Let's see if I can do this. I hope I can. Or else life's going to be very annoying if I don't. Ah, this sucks. Let's see. So that's it. Now another way, you see this, that's, I don't know if you can see that, that's where the boss is, it's threaded, so you want to align that with that. Not that one, this one up here. Sorry, this one. So let's see. And I think that's where it is, please. Yes, that's where it is. And you know what? Clown did it in one shot. Because I am the man. In case you ever, ever had any doubts. So, when you, when you tighten this down, it's going to actually press this cap against the housing and pull all this together. Right? Next, make sure you connect the solenoid. Goes over here. Like so. Now be careful here, be very careful, Actually, hold on a second, now it doesn't matter which one you put this on, um, but be careful certain cars have certain spots where you want the juice all the time, in my case I have a custom car so it doesn't matter, but You'd also, you would want to put this one on a side where it's empty, there's nothing connected to it, in most cases it's empty. And the other side, the two thick ones, the other side that's empty here, um, you're going to have to put everything else on it. It's usually like a junction block, like, uh, you know, uh, the battery cable will go directly there, and um, any other wires you might have, any fusible links and stuff like that. So I'm going to put that there for now. Alright. Next. This housing here, you take your Bendix, actually before you do that, you take this thing, it only goes in one way folks. If it doesn't work one way, like see it doesn't work out there, there's a little hole there, and you turn around and that works. And you take your Bendix, put some grease on here, make sure there's nothing scored and stuff like that. Same thing here, make sure there's nothing scored, there's no need for grease on this though, the pinion. You put that in its bore, make sure it meshes with the teeth of this gear in here, these teeth here. And you push down on it and it's it's seated. Go all around here and make sure the same space is all the way around. In my case it is, you see that? That means it's fully seated in the bore. And it's meshed with the gears on the armature. And don't forget also this little space for this little guy. And remember, these shims depending on your system, like I said in my how to shim start a video, um, that could be placed, you know, you could have two there, or one, or none, depending on how it sits in relation to your flat wheel. Now this particular block, not all starters have this. Ouch. Oh man, I have sciatic and it's just freaking my nerve. Ah, oh, it's killing me. Sharp pain. Anyway, it's horrible. So to put this block back on, you just put it back on here. Make sure it's square when you're putting this back in. Make sure it's all nice and level, or else it's not going to go in. It's going to go in crooked. Okay, I'm just pressing this on. That's all I'm doing, and making sure it's straight. And it'll be better if you just hold on a second. If you put it level on the table, sorry. You might want to tap a little bit, but be careful.
make sure you tap it in square like that. And now that's good. Now what you do here is you turn this until you see a hole in there. And that's where it, how that gets positioned. Like I said, this is clockable. So I see the hole in there. See that? So that's where it belongs. There's only, this only goes one way also, where the hole is. But this could be turned here one, two, or three. Okay, the hole should be in one of these spots. If there's no hole in here, that means this is turned the wrong way. So then you put your Allen head bolt in there. You screw that down. All right, that's good. And now this starter has two more bolts. Two more Phillips head bolts over here to hold this block in place on the other side, back here. Alright. There's one here and one here. And that takes us to the conclusion of how to reassemble a starter. And if you missed my first video on how to test, rebuild, and what, how everything works, please watch it. I also have other starter videos on how to test these things out of the car with battery cables, also how to shim them. And this is the end result right here. Okay. Now, this may not be what your starter looks like, but they're all follow the same principle. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more of these videos, you get updated whenever you get whenever when you subscribe, you get updated. And it's free to subscribe and free to like me. And uh, you just check that box underneath the video. You can also ask me any questions underneath. I'm pretty quick to respond to people. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.